All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at this Best Tech. It's a 500 watt power inverter. Nowhere in the ad or on this device or in the instruction manual does it say that this is a pure sine wave inverter. But we're going to test it out anyway and see what the wave output form looks like. We're going to do a couple of other tests with this. Uh, we're going to get our hands dirty and uh, see if this thing's any good. Stay tuned. I don't know if I have enough space to shoot this video. Anyhow, our power inverter is in this box, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to open this up and take a look-see. So it does come with a spec sheet and some instructions. We're not going to read that. And just kidding. We are an advocate of reading instructions when it comes to power. Let's go ahead and get all of this stuff out of here and see what we got. So it does look like it comes with some replacement fuses. There's two of them in here. I don't know the value yet. Then we have some wire here, and I guess this is for connecting to battery terminals. And then these would be the posts that we connect to the back of the inverter. And then this would be if you're using a cigarette lighter port. I'm not sure what else you would call that. Um, it says, please make sure load under 150 watts. So this is probably a limitation of the cigarette lighter port in, the, in a vehicle if you were going to use this as a vehicle mount solution. This thing is, uh, is pretty small, but it says on here, uh, 500 watt power inverter. We have a model number and input is DC 11 to 15 volts, 49 amps. Output AC is 115 uh, volts, uh, 60 hertz, 4.2 amps, and 500 watts. USB output DC, 5 volts, 4.8 amps. Let's just take a quick look at the output. So this would be your USB output. I guess this is a light or something. The lights when this is in use. We have an on-off switch, which is pretty handy. And then we have our two 110 um, outlets. These look like they're upside down to me. But, uh, you know, what do I know? Taking a look at the back, here are the two fuses. And in order to get to these, you have to take out some screws. And so we're probably not going to do that right now. Here's a fan and then our DC in. And uh, I don't know what these connectors are rated at, but they are pretty big and uh, pretty robust. Come on, man. So there we go. Let's get this thing uh, set up and start doing some tests. I don't know exactly what we're going to test first, but we're going to test something. So let's go ahead and set this up. <clears throat> okay, so we have the power inverter hooked up to a battery. I wouldn't suggest normally doing this, but we're just going to do some quick cursory tests. This is the ampere time. It's a light lithium battery, 12 volt, 12 amp hour. I just have it connected via power poles into these post connectors on the back of the device. Um, you can see when I turn it on, I get this green light. Uh, here we have our USB ports. We're going to test these. And uh, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to break up my multimeter and we're set for AC volts. And so I want to just do a quick test in here. And uh, you can see that this is at a hundred and 112. Uh oh, now it's going to go all over the place. Let's get back in there. 112.8, uh, your house is around 110 to 120, so that's probably just fine. And let's go ahead and test this side. And same thing. Um, also, I can go ahead and I can test the, the hertz output. So your house uh, is usually a 60 kilohertz cycle. I'm sorry, 60 hertz cycle, and there we go. 59.3, and this is well within spec. 59.3 so we're good there and then just for giggles let's go ahead and go to dc volts and just make sure that our battery is good and we are 13.2524 so that tests out good let's keep on keep on going here Okay, uh, we have this device, it's called the Charge Doctor, and it is plugged into the USB outlet here. And we're gonna use that to test the uh, USB charging capability. So let me go ahead and plug this in. And what we have here is a USB-C device. So this dropped down from a little over five volts to, it was reading about four. It's currently zero amps. We're gonna use this O1 uh, multimeter oscilloscope combo deal. Just going to plug this in and it should start charging 
So here we see it's charging at around five point something volts and it's pulling 1.31 amps, 1.29. That's not too bad. Uh, I don't know what this device, you can see here the red light is on indicating that it is charging. I don't know what this device pulls. Let's go ahead and just quickly test the bottom one and see if we get a similar, a similar thing. And right now it is not doing anything. Let me go ahead and make sure I plug this in all the way. There we go. The red light is back on. I don't think I had the plug fully seated, so it's, it's pulling 1.4 amps. Um, I want to turn this off, and uh, you can see that it's actually still charging. So these USB ports are always hot. We don't have the green light here. We do when we turn it on. And so the USB is always hot if you're connected up to something. So Something to think about or consider if you're using this and you leave a USB thing plugged in full time. All right, let, uh, let's see what else we can test. All right, because I know you people and I know how you think, you're going to say, oh, eight, when you tested the O1, it didn't push this thing to its max. So what we have here is we are connected through a mess of wires into this uh, load testing device and USB comes in down here in the corner. Right now it is saying 5.3 volts, which I think is consistent with the charge doctor. And what I can do here is I can actually turn up the amperage. I'm not gonna go too high because I believe that the device says that it goes to 2.4 on any single port, and I don't wanna overload that. Let me go ahead and turn it here. There we go, it's coming to life. So you can see 1.5, 1.49, so that's pretty close. You can see that uh, the voltage did drop over here. It's saying that it's getting 4.36. This was still reading a little bit higher. But the amperage looks about right. Oh, we went over, so let me turn down. So here we are, 2.3. Uh, this is rating 2.3. Using the fine adjustment, let me go a little higher. 2.65, that's over, so over. But this is uh, looks like it's delivering it. So no problems with the, uh, with the USB stuff. All right. Okay, I just wanna explain quickly what we're doing here. So here's the best tech inverter and I have it coming into a 110 plug that I've cut and stripped and fed into this BNC connector binding post. Then I'm feeding into this O1 HDS 2102S handheld oscilloscope. And what you can see here is that the waveform is not a sine wave. And this is what they call modified square wave. Now this is a little bit hard to see. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna to attempt to get this displayed on the Rigel oscilloscope. So we'll be back in a few minutes, but I wanted you to see the test setup that we use here. Okay, I wanna talk a little bit about what we see here. This is a capture I did of uh, what looks to be a sine wave when the device is actually powered off. So there's always a little bit of juice flowing through this thing. So if you have it connected up to a battery, it likely could drain, drain your battery over time. And so what I wanted to show, if you look in the lower left-hand corner, you can see our RMS voltage is uh, 73.428 millivolts, which is very low, but it's there. And then you can see the frequency is uh, 112.49 Hertz. I think that's to be expected. Uh, what I wanna do is I wanna zoom in on this a little bit and uh, let's see how close we can get. And so what you can see is, is that that is a pretty, pretty messy um, signal that's coming through. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn it on and uh, what I was getting was a little erratic. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, see what's going on here. And then uh, let me go ahead and stop. And so you can see that uh, it starts in the center of the screen that our signal starts off high and then it drops down uh, quickly and it has got some artifacts in there. I'm not sure what you want to call them to kind of a transitional phase to where we go to a mid signal. Let me see if I can get there quickly. This is taking its time. I apologize in advance. Let me, let me go ahead and shrink it up a little bit. There we go. So you can see uh, what happens is, is that we have like this middle transitional phase and then it goes back up to the top and that is the high and low. 
um, signal that we get through here. So it is not exactly clean. Um, I think it's okay. I'm not upset when I bought this. I knew it wasn't a pure sine wave inverter. I do have a uh, diagram that I'm going to show from Best Tech that talks about when you want to use a pure sine wave inverter versus a non-pure sine wave. I think they call it a modified sine wave. Um, I didn't expect it to look like this. I expected it to look more like it did on the O1, but uh, in either event, it's not a sine wave. All right, folks, so what we have here is a very creative way that I've wired the Best Tech up to my Unity UTP1306 power supply. Now, this power supply doesn't put out enough uh, amps. I think it cuts off at around three, three and a half to really do anything with this Best Tech. But what we want to do is we want to test our uh, current draw at idle. So when this thing is idle, we want to test that. The other thing we want to do is we want to actually drop our voltage and see where the cutoff is for the power inverter. So let's go ahead and turn the inverter on. And what you should see here is our draw at 13.6 volts. Um, the reason I set it at 13.6 is because that's what I set it at. So here we are. You can see we're at around uh, 0.458 of an amp. So that is somewhere around half of an amp is our current DC draw. Um, so just something to be mindful of. I'm not saying that is or that isn't a problem. So I'm going to go and use this digit to drop down. And some folks may not like that, but that's okay. They would say, well, why did you do it uh, more granularly or less granularly? But uh, this is what we're going to do. So here we are down at 10 and a half. And um, as you can see, the supply is still on. Here we are at nine. Oh, starting to blink. So that's our low vo voltage warning. Um, let me go back over here. Now we'll use the last digit. It's probably going to cut at around nine. I, d I did not check the documentation to see what it would cut at. Okay, you can see this light getting dimmer. What I'm going to suspect is that when this started blinking is, is when it actually stopped uh, working. So let's go up and see when it starts to stay solid again. And we're probably going to have to go all the way up to 12 to get that to... Uh, there we go. So it's back on. Turning down, I think we get the blink right around 9. It, there we go. Right around 8 is where we start to get the blink and the cutoff. All right, folks, that is going to do it for this portion of the test. Okay, we're just going to spend a few seconds here talking about the product listing. I did get this off of Amazon. And you can see the price is $45.99. With tax, I believe it was around 50 bucks. But what you can see here is the power inverter, and it actually comes in a couple of different colors. I could have got it in gray and saved myself a buck. Um, I'll have a link below, and you'll be able to check this out. You'll be able to look at more pictures of it and read about the precautions and the specifications and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to sit here and read that to you. Uh, I did want to show, now this is from the Best Tech Pure Sine Wave Inverter. Uh, 500 watts. So it's almost the same product, except for it does do a pure sine wave. And I wish this chart was actually on both products because here it shows the different things that uh, you can use these for. Um, like here, modified wave is not good for printers, cameras, drills, dash cams, CPAPs, hair straighteners, hair curlers, etc. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't run them on this thing, but, you, you, but uh, you'll have problems. So what will happen is that when you run some of these devices on the modified sine wave, the modified sine wave is constructed by various frequencies, and not all those frequencies make their way into your electric device, like your hair curler, for example. So what it does is it creates excess draw on your inverter, and that puts a strain or stress on your electronic device, like your hair curler. Hopefully that explains it. Now you can buy this particular one, the pure sine wave inverter, for about $20 more than you can buy the one with the modified sine wave inverter. Um, am I going to do that? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, so we want to continue testing the best tech. So I got some test devices. I don't even know what some of this stuff is or does. But uh, what I do know is, is that based off the chart we looked at, it does say that not to use these types of things on your uh, modified sine wave inverter. So this will be an extra test. And we really just want to see what kind of wattage we're getting out of the best tech. Okay, so what we have here is the Conair 1875 hair dryer. Um, I have the Best Tech connected to a 100 amp hour lithium ion battery, and I have this upside down 
because I have this Kuhlman. This is an AC usage meter or uh, measuring tool. I don't know what you call it. But uh, what I do is I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to plug this hair dryer in to this, which is plugged into the inverter. And then I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to flip this baby on low. Now, I tested this at a on a regular socket. And... Okay, right now we have this device, and I'm not sure what this does. But uh, taking a look, here we are in our wattage setting. So let me go ahead and turn this on and see what we get. So in those two tests, we got up to around 370, close to 400 watts. Uh, I'm not going to push this all the way to 500 watts. Um, I do think you could do it. I don't think that those are the right type of load that I want to apply on this thing. Um, I don't really care so much about ruining the curling iron or whatever it is um, because they were in the drawer. <laughs> they haven't been used in forever. Um, I'm not sure, sure what's gonna, what the fate of those are going to be. But uh, overall, you know, you have to look at this thing as a $45 power inverter. Um, I don't think it's the best thing in the world by any stretch, but I don't think it's the worst thing in the world either. Um, I do think this is a kind of a handy little thing that could uh, come in useful in a pinch. And um, that's really it. If you guys have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.